Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Ah, <sighs> dreamy sigh for the deliciousness. Uh, those of you acutely observant, either on video or listening to the sounds of the chime, will note that I'm back inside today. It's a stormy morning here in Santa Fe, not precipitation, alas, but um, a cold wind blowing. Today is Monday, April 25th. It's the perfect date. Um, all you need is a light jacket. Uh, hopefully that'll be us this afternoon. You, I'm sure all of you get that. Maybe not my mom, but uh, you know, what can you do? Ah, I had a great weekend. Um, did get to get out in the garden, hung up my hanging plants. You can't see them on the video. It's too glare -y. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Uh, but yeah, I've got my hanging plants hung up just in time for them to be uh, blasted by the cold wind, but I'm sure they'll be fine. <laughs> they'll be fine. Everything is fine. I uh, got some other ones planted. I put together a couple of hanging baskets of my own. We'll see how they turn out. I did go out and check on them, uh, see if uh, I could sit outside. And I thought, oh, it's not going to be pleasant. Been uh, scraping tumbleweeds out of <laughs> the property. So Friday, we got this wind that was unreal. I mean, they've been giving us the high wind warnings. By afternoon, we had a, the alert go off on our phones saying, warning us of dust storms that, uh, you know, if we were traveling, that the visibility could go down to zero in like no time at all. We were having like 70 mile an hour, 75 mile an hour gusts. Um, and the wind roared all night long. It was... It was something, people. So I'll put a photo on the show notes, but the uh, the tumbleweeds, I was bitching about the tumbleweeds last week. They're, they're everywhere. I had already cleaned up a bunch from like under the juniper out front and that kind of thing. Tons under there now, but they had mounted up in front of our garage. You know, like the old, um, I don't know. You know, if you grew up reading Laura Ingalls Wilder like I did or that sort of thing. But, you know, instead of having snow piled up to the eaves of our house so that we have to dig our way out, we had tumbleweeds piled up in front of the garage. And I did, like, get out there and drag them out of the way just to get the car out of the garage. It was, um, it was something. And on Saturday, I saw... Some of the writer people, and Melinda Snodgrass did a plot break with us down at Beastly Books, and Le Melinda has lived here all her life. I've just been here like 13 years. But I asked Melinda, because she lives not far from me, um, just like we're, we're both sort of in the same outskirts of Santa Fe area. She's a little bit more outskirty than I am. But I asked her, I said, knew the wind had to be bad at her house too. And she was, and she said it was the worst she'd ever experienced in all her time here. Good thing. There's no such thing as global climate change, right? Otherwise we'd be concerned. Ugh. Uh, total aside for those of you who I, you probably were not, you probably were not worried about my laptop screen, but it is gradually drying out. It dried out some when I was in Tucson and there's like only a couple little spots left. Uh, it's mostly good now. I've been meaning to mention that there's like one that's like, right. If I do this, <laughs> you're on video, I could put it like right over my face and then it looks like I have some sort of skin condition, but if I don't do that, <laughs> it's sort of like the, uh, the thing with the doctor, you know, it's like, um, you know, stop doing that. It hurts when I do this, then don't do that. <sighs> so, um, yeah, been cleaning out tumbleweeds. I, I told David that for the first time 
really ever. I understand now why people want to burn stuff because there's like, what can you do with all of these tumbleweeds except set them free again? I wish the HOA would hire like a big wood chipper and put it in the community parking lot and so that we could just haul all our tumbleweeds there chop them up that's it's so tempting to set a match to the fuckers uh, except then we would be <laughs> we would have big problems but i understand now why people want to do it um yeah so so had a great time got i was pretty efficient on saturday got the laundry done got some chores done around the house and then and some nebula meeting stuff and then headed out in the afternoon and ran a few errands and then met up with the writer folks for the plot break. Talked to Grace Straven on the phone for a while and that was really nice to get to talk to her. Uh, she had some, some good news career-wise so that's nice because she's been having a hard time with dealing with family stuff. So it's funny when we have these conversations we our conversations are this mix of personal family and career. But it was nice to get to have a, a long conversation with her. And um, yeah, and just debate stuff, you know, it's, we were, we, um, we rubberneck on other authors and, and judge them <laughs> quietly to each other. <clears throat> but it's always interesting to look at what other people are doing and to it, it helps reaffirm our own guidelines for what we're trying to do and one conclusion I came to I've been sort of mulling one question and I'm trying to think of how to phrase this because I don't want to to give you guys the exact details but ultimately I came around to well I don't know why my writing is perceived this way and someone else's writing is perceived that way and then I kind of circled around on it and said but you know why am I even thinking about this because even if I could figure it out it's not like I'm going to change what I'm doing and and I come back to this over and over again I and I've even got this little well, I've got it stuck on here pretty well on my monitor, but it's a Georgia O'Keeffe quote. And she says, if you can believe in what you are and keep to your line, that is the most one can do in with life. And I really do believe that. Uh, you know, it's tempting, tempting when you look at maybe something else being uh, more widely regarded, uh, you know, more popular, selling better, um, having a better reputation that you think, oh, should I, should I be trying to do something more like that? And of course, there's always the drive to improve, to, to grow and to do better. And are those things in line with each other or are they going in different directions? And what I ended up circling around to on this was, I'm not going to try to write like somebody else does. Even if I could, I couldn't do that. All I can do is believe in what my, what I am and keep to my line. And I think that's, that's, that's just part of you have to grow and develop in your own way, but you can't be someone else. And we were, uh, looking at another author who is trying very, very hard to look like somebody else. And, and, and she's not the only one. It's tempting, you know, everybody wants to be as hugely successful as some of the big authors, some of the big popular authors right now. And, but imitating them isn't going to get anywhere. Something that I don't do, and it may be effective marketing. It probably is effective marketing. Grace and I were acknowledging that it probably is. And at the same time, we both just hate it is when people have perfect for fans of Sarah J. Moss. And it's always like the same three authors, you know, perfect for fans of these books. And it's like, well, 
what maybe it's perfect for fans of your books guys uh i i shake my cane at you can i shake i'll shake my uh permission wand here shaking the permission wand uh <laughs> it's not the same as shaking a cane but um yeah be yourself right like you if if you want to do a cover that's more in line with the subgenre now i just did this rebranding for sorceress moon's books uh, they'll start releasing on friday i am trying a new a few new marketing things on those i'm going to put them in kindle unlimited uh, but i want to signal to readers that i think these books fit in that genre but i am not going to tell you that you know perfect for fans of throne of glass you know first of all okay mea culpa i'm going to say it right out here um i hated throne of glass i tried to read it i read about half of it and nearly threw it against the wall because i found it insipid and stupid i know a lot of people love it i'm sorry you know it's I, and and it's one of those ones that like people say oh well it gets better after the next book and it's like yeah i'm not going to spend any more of my life reading about this girl who's supposed to be an assassin she's supposed to be a trained assassin and she's like the stupidest assassin on the face of the earth who never does actual assassin things uh there there's my unpopular opinion and i know a lot of people love it um and it's a great premise it was a really wonderful premise and i i read it you know as part of genre research uh, there are other books that are wildly popular that I think are abysmally stupid. And I'm never, ever, ever, I, I shouldn't say never, ever, ever, but I, I feel like at this moment, I can say with confidence that I'm not going to compare my books to those because I don't, I think I write better books than that. Yes, they're not as popular, but so anyway. It's, it's back to that same thing. And I know I talk about this a lot, but um, don't try to write like somebody. Don't try to make your book be a clone of somebody else's. So anyway, it was fun talking to Grace. Um, always uh, grounding for me to do that with her. And I've got, I cleaned off my desk. I, I had like all this crap. You know how it like slowly grows. I like a really clean desk. So I'm very happy that my desk is now clean. But I've got a couple of stickies. So I'm going to throw this one in here. Um, I thought I was going to talk more about it. But I was, you know, last week or the week before I talked about Generation X stuff. So I think maybe this is a Gen X thing. But when I see on, a, I don't know, any of these social media sites, when I'm trying to find something or look at something in particular and they have the thing like, look at what's trending. It's like, is it just me that I am automatically suspicious of anything that's trending? This is not a feature for me. It's a bug. It's like, if it's trending, I don't want to know about it because that's like mass mind shit. I'm in a feisty mood this morning, aren't I? I mean, when you guys see stuff that's trending, do you go, do you magpie to it? I know that's what they want us to do. I think this is like a Gen X thing. Megan, tell me, <laughs> since we are fellow Gen Xies. Um, so then my other sticky note, I was, uh, well, I wanted to finish what I was saying about Melinda. Um, she's so smart and it's really fun to hang out with her. And for those of you not familiar with Melinda Snodgrass, um, she has written, you know, she wrote for Star Trek, the next generation. She was the show showrunner for the third season. She wrote the episode, the measure of a man where they did the trial for whether or not data was human, I think is, was the question. Um, she's also written on other shows, um, the profiler, uh, stuff like that. She's writing on a new show. It was fun because after we did the plot break stuff, which I'd like to go and listen to, that's how I got into this. I was explaining to grace that I don't go to get my own work critique because I have feelings about that, but I like meeting with this group because I really like hearing how Melinda approaches plotting. 
she has such a different approach to it than I do. So this is part of how I want to learn and grow because I may not be able to do it like she does. I'm tempted to try it with one of my upcoming books to have her do plot break with me and just see if I can do it. But one of her things is, is she, she has to know the ending. She wants to know the ending so that she can figure out everything leading up to that. And she's very firm in her opinions, which I adore about her, but I think is funny sometimes too, because sometimes I just totally don't agree with her. Um, but she puts things with such conviction. I, I admire that. Uh, but she's like, you have to know the ending. Otherwise you never end anything. And it's like, I, I finish stuff all the time. Uh, but I never know the ending till I get there. But there is one book that I do kind of, that I'm one of my upcoming projects for the fall. I do kind of know the ending of it. And I'm going to get her to, uh, maybe do plot break with me on it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It may, I don't know. I might drive us both crazy. <laughs> we'll find out. But um, yeah, so I was telling Grace how interesting it is uh, just to go through that mental process. And it was very um, stimulating for me, refilling the well. Uh, and, and now I have all of these ideas of things that I want to do. And, and she's funny. I may never get around to my sticky note here because I have other things to say. I did ask her a question because one of my upcoming projects is very much inspired by a particular movie. And, and I love her that she didn't ask me what it was. I said, basically, it's an alternate fantasy world version of, of a big movie. And she, well, she did say, well, if it's Casablanca. And I said, it's not Casablanca. <laughs> they all love Casablanca. It's like the perfect movie and perfect story. Uh, they were going on about it at the Jack Williamson lectureship too. And I guess at Taos Toolbox, they have a Casablanca viewing night where people um, are forced to watch it and then they analyze why it works so well. I know I saw it a long time ago when I was younger and I keep thinking, oh, I should watch it again. But uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'd appreciate it better this time. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm clearly never going to get to this sticky note, so it's just going to have to live on my desk today. <clears throat> I asked her, I said, you know, this is what I want to do. I said, if you were going to do this, <laughs> if you, you know, not me, would you try to plot the book according to the exact beats of the movie, or would you just allow that be to be the inspiration and, and, get away from the movies. And she kind of cocked her head at me in a funny way. And she's like, I would imitate the movie. Of course. She said, that's, that's how you do good work is you find the right template and you use it. So I've never done this before, but I'm, I'm intrigued. So I have these two potential projects that I could try to plot break with her. And I would find very interesting to, um, I don't know, just try to stretch myself a little bit that way. I'm having all these stretchy feelings as those of you who um, have been participating in the podcast for a long time, having coffee with me for some time now uh, that, you know, like I'm wanting to go into multiple POVs, which I know should not be as big a deal as it feels to me, but it does. And I think it's, it's breaking out of that romance structure is why it feels like such a big deal. Um, and I kind of want to do that for the next Bonds of Magic book once I finish this one. Um, I found out interesting things about the book that I'm writing. I'm enjoying that. And let's see. Oh, and I know that there's something I'm supposed to tell you guys also. I have to go look at my um, to-do list because I know I noted it on there. Something I'm supposed to publicize as a responsible author. Oh yeah. Um, I have, I'm going to start putting the link in the show notes, but I do have a list of, uh, blah, blah, blah. for the polycon convention in July, I have a pre-order link and it's only, I think good to like the first week of June or something like that. But if you want to pre-order print books for me to have there for you to 
purchase and sign and so forth, uh, you can do that. And I've been meaning to say things about it. I need to put it out there a little bit more. Um, and then Sorcerer's Moons rebranding coming the end of this week. Exciting. Yeah. So um, there's my 20 minutes further stickies tomorrow. I uh, hope you all had a great weekend too. Um, hope you are feeling like stretching and growing in all the most positive ways. And I hope that April 25th is indeed the perfect date for you. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.